The relentless drive for October is reaching its apex in the next few weeks. To lock down and protect a playoff spot is what all teams strive for. Security and the comfort of knowing there will be a tomorrow is of the utmost concern. You should feel the same way about your internet browsing. ExpressVPN can help. In this age of internet, anonymity, privacy, and security are being chipped away like a division lead. With state-of-the-art encryption and blazing connection speeds, their VPNs give you the comforts and protection of a true champion. Ever since I cut the cord, streaming has been my main choice for watching sports. What has always annoyed me are the annoying pop-ups, region locks, and rather questionable websites. ExpressVPN allows me both the security of knowing my computer is safe, and the speed that allows me to comfortably stream at a high bitrate. All of this costs you less than $7 a month, and if you are dissatisfied, there is a 30-day money-back guarantee. Be bold by purchasing a one-year package and get three months of world-class protection free by running over to expressvpn.com slash utree. Like all playoff contenders, the need for reliability and security is paramount. Lock down your internet today with ExpressVPN. And now for the playoff push. Let us begin again with the class of the AL East in the Boston Red Sox. They are all but a lock for a postseason berth, barring losing nearly every single game remaining, but there is discontent growing within their fan ranks. The Red Sox have been... pedestrian. They have merely hovered around 500 for a stretch, and thus is enough for some to start clamoring for change. It doesn't matter that the Sox have been dominating for long stretches of the season and all teams go through this sort of thing. The Red Sox are apparently done. I merely laugh in their faces. Calm your tits, you're still loading over the Yankees last time I checked. The pinstripes, no big changes in position. The main difference is, well, Aaron Judge is still out. The panic might be setting in, but you went across the country and bought yourself a former MVP in Andrew McCutcheon. He may be a shell of what he once was, but he's still serviceable, damn it. For the Yankees, the recipe has been a lot of mediocrity. They've mostly been hovering around 500 for the past month, but once again, they are in a position where they can afford such a slide. They are most likely making a wildcard slot, but where? This question will be answered by our dear friends in the AO West, the only part of the AO where there is some semblance of competition for the division lead. The Astros have looked surprisingly weak in the month of August, but there is a legitimate reason for it. A strong majority of the team has been banged up or deep in the infirmary. This includes core pieces like George Springer and the legendary Garden Gnome. The fortunate thing is that since more pieces have returned, the Strohs have resumed their winning ways, going 18-5 and five since the middle of August. Roberto Osuna, for as weird as the trade was, is still rock solid out of the bullpen, and Alex Bregman is emerging as another piece of the core. Regardless, they still have to keep pace to avoid the relentless onslaught of the goddamn Oakland Athletics. It was a mere fluke, most of us thought. They are overachieving, and reality will hit them right in the face. Honestly, it's looking more and more of a reality of shrines built to Billy Bean. All hail to the home run king, Chris Davis. You heard me right, home run king. Matt Chapman is emerging as a star and a keystone of the organization for a while to come. Jed Lowry and Marcus Semien are having career years. And who the hell is Ramon Laureano? Either way, he's raking as well. The bullpen, absolutely dominant. They're prepping for October, be it the wildcard game or legit baseball. My offer still stands, Oakland. Now, only if you could get people in the area to care. So where does this leave Seattle? Why is the bridesmaid looking scornfully towards all the cool kids with their hoverboards and fidget spinners? The inevitable slide towards irrelevance has continued with the subpedestrian August and September. The longer the Astros and days remain white hot, the lower the odds of the Mariners breaking their playoff streak. A team that has done nothing but waste generational talents is once again wasting a transcendent year by Edwin Diaz and a great month for Mitch Hanniger. The starting rotation is imploding, the bats are tapering off, in particular Kyle Seeger, and the team's awful run differential is finally starting to haunt them. I knew they were going to punch their fans in the dick, but in no way did I imagine it would be like this. This is a falcon punch right to the nads, a year of horrible pain that will go down in infamy, just like the 2001 ALCS and many other since. In fact, the team has joined in by openly fighting amongst each other. Do you want a legacy of failure? Because this is how you get one, Seattle. I keep forgetting about fucking Cleveland. Is it any surprise why? They've all but clinched the division since July. Despite this, the Indians aren't going to let Chief Wahoo go out in a place of choking like the last few years. They need a new weapon for October. They have it in Josh Donaldson, who has been injured to shit this entire season. He is reunited with Encarnacion to painfully disappoint their fans in the ALCS like in Toronto. That is, if they're lucky. 
Why am I talking about the angels? They've been done for a while now. Oh right, the unicorn! Despite his elbow being fucked, he's still hitting well and should have a bright future with the halos. Why the hell are you letting him pitch again? Do you realize the consequences of such actions? Jesus Christ, you fucking killed him. You poached the unicorn. Fucking Soja, couldn't you start Deck Maguire or some other scrub in a meaningless game instead? It's time for everyone's favorite game, Who Wants to Win the NL East? In front of us, there are three prospective teams trying their hardest to lose games and choke away a guaranteed ass whooping in the NLDS. Our first contestant is the Tomahawk Chop. Turns out that slapping some band-aids on a sketchy bullpen was a bad idea. And there's that whole injury to your closer thing. As a result, the Braves have taken on the Atlanta stereotype of blowing leads and pissing away golden opportunities to secure the division. The newly acquired Adam Duvall has been hot garbage and the rest of the team seems to have followed suit. The only thing that is carrying this team is the legendary Ronald Acuna and his relentless barrage of leadoff homers. This is getting too interesting for baseball. Beat him! A garbage pitcher for a garbage organization. So fitting. Wait, you're telling me they're winning again? Guess the Atlanta stereotype can be bucked. Let's see how Philadelphia's been doing. Oh boy, another thing for Philly to rightfully bitch about. It appears that your garbage bullpen is, surprise, garbage. How's that adding rentals to the hitting core working out for that terrible batch of arms you have? Losing 10 series throughout August and early September. The bats freezing cold to the point of reaching zero degrees Kelvin. As for the pitching, need I say more? Either forcing Philadelphians to cling on to something in fear or breaking the dam. Sir Anthony Dominguez looks completely overdone. Most of the starters have been struggling and Aaron Nola is about to punch some one in the face with how many excellent outings of his have been wasted. The pain isn't ending soon either. You're still in the thick of it, technically. And then there are the Nationals. Oh, Nationals. The gods are literally offering you a division title for the taking. They're literally saying, here, take it, please, Washington, have the NL East. All you have to do is touch it. What have the Nationals done with this opportunity? Emulate the performances in the NLDS. The hitting core has returned to form once again, destroying balls without prejudice, but an old foe undermines them again. The pitching. Yes, turns out selling pieces and dealing with key long-term injuries is a recipe for disaster. The bullpen is ridiculously awful, excluding a Greg Holland suddenly pitching like a god again. The starters? Gio Gonzalez has been one of the worst in baseball and Steven Strasburg looks shot. The hopes and prayers of management have gone unanswered. Time to sell off the depth. Everything not locked down sold off at bargain values. Enjoy wasting another great year of Max Scherzer, you failures. Leading the NL Central, those dastardly cubbies. This batch of cubs now gets to experience the wonders of massive inconsistency. The bats once again hot and cold, like the majority of the season. The starting pitching has regressed to become uncharacteristically bad over the last month. They need a jolt. They may have gotten it with Cole Hamels pitching like an ace again, and Daniel Murphy. Playoff hero, outstanding hitter, terrible fielding, he has it all. In fact, do I hear a familiar tune in the background? There will be no you magic this October. The memes suffer as a result. Next up, the Brew Crew, now boasting more emergency armaments of differing values to the pitching core. I can't get a read on these guys. One moment they look like they're going to collapse and be leapfrogged by the NL West. The next, Christian Yelich turns into Milwaukee's Babe Ruth and starts hammering the shit out of the ball. Him and Locane are bailing them out of an embarrassing collapse. For now. The pitching, very iffy except for Wade Miley? He's good again? Huh. You're gonna need it with a new challenger from the shadows. The Cardinals. Shit like this was why I was afraid to give up on them. Because the moment you think they're done, they find more of that magic dust of bullshit. It's the traditional St. Louis formula of finding a bunch of random young minor leaguers with no pedigree and stabbing teams to death by fundamentals. Matt Carpenter and his salsa have reinvigorated a struggling season. With names like Harrison Bader, Patrick Wisdom, Jack Flaherty, and Tyler O'Neill, you'd think they just plucked them off the street. Also, Marcelo Zuna got off the schneid as well. The cards have been so white hot that interim manager Mike Schilt is no longer interim, if you get my drift. Damn it, I was so excited to think they were out of it. But alas, back in the picture you go. Speaking of random teams, how did the Pirates do? Figures. Unfortunately, those once hot bats have become the epitome of freezing, barely getting runs across as if it were a tremendous drought. The sad reality is that their pitching has been some of the best in baseball since July. With this kind of arsenal, the Pirates should be deep in the wildcard hunt. Alas, the quest for mediocrity is paramount. I should amend, the pitching has been great except for one player, Chris Archer. 
The A at least reinforces how they told us he was trash. He has sucked so far, being the weakest link in the rotation. And they also gave up another top 100 prospect to get him. This could be a terrible trade if things keep up. That 11 game winning streak was the worst thing that could have happened. Fuck. The NL West has become one of the most exciting divisions in baseball. Three teams within one to two games of each other jockeying for dominance with no end in sight. The result has been 27 other franchises looking on in delight. The Diamondbacks have once again continued their roller coaster of a season with David Peralta and Paul Goldschmidt murdering baseballs left and right. Their pitching core led by the Phoenix known as Clay Buckholtz rising from the ashes to dominate like he did in Boston. Colorado, same situation. There are these moments that you think they'll either emerge or fall into an arrest slide, yet reverse course either way. They'll lose 8 of 11, then win 13 of 16, then lose 4 of 5, then win 5 straight. What this team needs is consistency. Maybe it comes with bringing back Matt Holliday for his final ride. Maybe it comes with the pitching of Kyle Freeland and Herman Marquez. For the love of God, they'll get that bullpen back in shape. Bringing up the caboose, the Dodgers. At this rate, I feel LA has dressed roughly a quarter of the players in the league. The bad news is that Matt Kemp has gone cold again. The good, Justin Turner and Cody Bellinger are beating the ball so bad you could charge them for assault. The starting pitching has been elite, but there's a little problem with Kenley Jansen. He's struggling again and he's been dealing with an irregular heartbeat. You're going to need someone else to step up for him. Who is Dylan Floro and how is he pitching like that? The San Francisco Giants are somehow still around? Strange. They're all but done, but posturing that they can still make a run. Unit lost. That should put an end to it. Trade Kutch to save a few bucks in the meantime. At least you aren't the city of Worcester, Massachusetts. You're giving that much to move the Paw Sox over to you? Enjoy the debt, idiots. Look at where Stalling set up. He pulls it to the right side.